A grizzled Brian Cox is the eponymous hero in Rory's Way. He's a cantankerous old boy, enjoying life on a northern Hebrides island, skinny dipping in the ocean and whittling wood. But his back pain is taking him to San Francisco for medical treatment. It's where his son Ian, JJ Field, and daughter-in-law Emily, Thora Birch, live with their baby son, Jamie. Hallelujah. And it's obvious when Rory moves in that the father-son relationship is strained. What the hell are you doing? However, Rory's growing fondness for his grandson and the fact that the report from the doctor is far from favourable make him at least open to some of the pleasures in the world, like his relationship with art gallery executive Claudia, Rosanna Arquette. I found Rory's way a plodding experience. It's predictable and cliched. JJ Field has a thankless role as the petulant son, and Thora Birch doesn't fare much better as the maternally straight-jacketed daughter-in-law. And even though Rosanna Arquette is lovely, I just didn't believe in that relationship. While Brian Cox can be an impressive performer at times, it's almost as if he knows there's something very forced in the character of Rory. It's just too much that's phony about this film. It was adapted from a novel by the Spanish writer Jose Luis San Pedro, who actually set the story in Italy. There were five credited writers with the screenplay and it looks as if they've gone for the lowest common denominator. It was directed by two Israeli filmmakers, Michal Brezis and Oded Binun, who were Oscar nominees for their short film Aya. They seem to be having a hard time making their material believable. I gather you didn't like this one very much. No. 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 No, no, nor did I. Oh, thank you. It was goodness. a real strain to get through this. It was so, as you say, so cliched and so plotting and so predictable in so many ways. Well, it should have been should have been left in Italy. This film. Well, mm. he, uh, San Pedro apparently uh, wrote it when he had a grandson. So it, you know, it was sort of like you get the feeling that there is something very personal about this baby evoking something in a man who maybe hasn't yes. been a great father, but. Mm. You know, it's sort of like it's so ham-fistedly handled. Oh, yes. Well, the, this... fir the first half is a bit reminded me of it like sort of Crocodile Dundee in yeah. New York, you know. It was so yeah. so cliched and so so obvious. Yeah, and he's a sort of like contemptuous of every mod yeah. con and... Yeah, you know, and, I, uh, and I didn't... You're right about the relationship with Rosanna Arquette. That just seemed ludicrous. I mean, she she's obviously about 30 and he's about 75, 80. Well, well actually, I think I looked her up. She's actually 60. I know. I think there's been a little bit of touching up going on, a little bit of I, cake and pasting. I, I thought she looked absolutely fabulous. And if mm. there has been any work done, it's, it's worked very well. It was really well done. Very well I done. I want the name of her doctor. Absolutely. <laughs> I, want to, I want to touch up by that doctor, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does look absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. She plays it very well. Her career's kind of lapsed a bit, hasn't I it? I know. And, uh, well, she's, she's been on the a way bit back. overshadowed by the sister. Yeah, but Trisha. she was a big big star for, for a while. Yeah. And uh, I think she'll be a big star again. She is absolutely gorgeous in this. And, uh, yeah. And but she, the relationship is just ludicrous. Yeah, but she um, handles her role well, I thought. Yes. Look, I'd give this three stars. I'd give it three as well. It really is quite ridiculous. There might be a day sometime very soon. I won't be here any longer. I'm not going to make the same mistake with him I did with you. I really want you to be in my life. 